Hi guys, I am Beetle, and after having spent some time with the new Ducati Desert X, which somehow is written with an X attached to the end of the word desert and not separately, I can officially say that I've now ridden all mid-size adventure motorcycles that are on the market right now. I'll tell you what it's like to ride, what's great about it, what's not, and why I really wanted to like it, but I'm not sure I should so much. I'm on a sort of a mission to get through the clatter of journalists' bullcrap that gives us all often a very wrong impression of motorcycles that we are interested in, and then we get sometimes disappointed. Not every motorcycle is awesome, as you hear in the reviews on YouTube, especially uh, recorded uh, during launches in Portugal, Spain, or anywhere else, where manufacturers invite journalists to try their newest creations. Of course, I wish I was there, obviously, right? But in fact, I used to attend such media drives in the car industry a few years ago, being on the other side of all that. And I've got to tell you that these trips may be some of the best adventures and life stories that could happen to any of us. And the level of excitement, and then the level of gratitude and impression for organizing such events is so strong that I don't believe anyone can stay unbiased when reviewing the launched product and not keep it at least mostly positive. I know I could not be, it's basically paid sponsorship just in a different way and so criticism is not welcome as well, very openly sometimes. Well, you may reveal some flaws that aren't key or you actually point to something bad and then you don't attend such events anymore. So yeah, and then you're done because you're not one of the first ones who can uh, publish the material and basically you're out of business. So please excuse this intro, but it's important. And since this is the last motorcycle in the segment, I want you to know why I'm going through with my honest reviews. It's for you guys to have insights into unbiased opinions, which are super hard to find as a side journalist whose job it is and business and politics matter. There are usually only owners who talk about their awesome, obviously, motorcycles. No one would want to appear ridiculous mentioning what's wrong with their well thought out purchase that they've made. I believe you now see where I'm coming from. So I have waited for Ducati Desert X for a long time after starting the year by riding a Ducati Multistrada V2 with the same engine as in this Desert X. I thought it would make sense to leave it for the end. Looking at the photos and Ducati's promotional materials about the Desert X, I've got to tell you that I really was waiting to get my hands and my butt on it. I feel it looks super cool. It's a nice blend of something from the past, specifically a rally motorcycle with nowadays a rather retro style and something modern and fancy at the same time. I see the appeal here and it does not disappoint in real life. It stands out in the crowd of other plasticky motorcycles and it just looks badass. I couldn't get rid of an impression that this is either a Jeep Wrangler or maybe even more a Mercedes G-Class of motorcycles. You can see the resemblance even in those front ring lights that I like myself very much. Overall, it can be so cool to us who are more into adventure motorcycles that, well, it simply makes us want to like it. Then, by looking at the shape of Desert X, a moment of hesitation comes as you wonder if it's actually rideable. With that rally heritage, tall seat and thin tires, and let me tell you that it surely is, and there's nothing to worry about here. After riding a similarly looking Yamaha Tenere 700 and Aprilia 2RX 660, this one is the most comfortable. Shouldn't intimidate anyone who is over 1 meter 80 centimeters tall or 5 feet uh, 10 or 11 uh, inches or however this is counted tall. So yeah, the bike is tall when it comes to the seat. Me being 183 centimeters tall or exactly 6 feet tall, I sometimes could flat foot it on both sides, but then sometimes not really. I'm not sure why, but it's exactly in my limits and actually just a bit too tall to be entirely 
comfortable in supporting myself with my legs and stopping at the traffic lights, for example. My trousers would get pulled a lot with me trying to reach the ground. The seat is at 87 and a half centimeters, so pretty tall and it is not adjustable. It looks pretty narrow and on top it is, but when going down, it becomes wider and wider. So at the end, you still have to spread your legs significantly and this makes reaching the ground harder. The fuel tank is also pretty wide, like on a KTM 1290 Super Adventure series. I would say the way I need to spray my legs is just a bit worrying, but it's just an initial impression as I quickly go to used to it. The surface of the seat is not too hard and I find the seat overall comfortable, especially that you won't be sliding forward too much and so crushing anything that shouldn't be crushed. It is wide enough under the bum area to stay fine for long. It's just that reaching the ground can be a challenge and is not the most comfortable experience for someone built like me. You can get a lower seat if you want or a taller one if you would prefer that. Or you can get a 7G11 electric office chair in multiple colors if you're getting sore after riding a motorcycle and want to uh, then experience something fully adjustable and a piece of art. So you better check them out at powerseats.eu. On the Desert X, getting a lower seat may make sense, especially that the bike is not super light at 223 kilograms with all fluids. So having it tall, with high center of gravity, oh, it feels that way, you've got to watch yourself. It's still not intimidating, it's not overly wide, the handlebar isn't super wide, even though one might expect it to be. It's fine if you're built like me there. However, after starting to ride it, I noticed that there's something that doesn't suit me. The handlebar is higher than in all other competitors except for Aprilia Touareg, which has its handlebar even higher than this is the excellent works right there. The height here in and Ducati is fine, but I was having an impression that I'm leaning forward when holding it. This would make me not be able to steer as precisely at low speeds when, for example, the windstream wouldn't hold my body and make me not rest on my wrists. Depending on the current position of it, perhaps raising the handlebar on some risers would help. It was just a little bit, you know, out of my range. And it could also help when riding off-road, by the way. I took Desert X for a spin on a gravel road and nope, the bars for that are uh, too low for me to be able to comfortably stand on the foot pegs and not lean forward or not bend my legs way too much or not having to bend my legs too much. Well, I cannot uh, do that anyway and I wouldn't want to. So again, this motorbike looks like a hardcore off-roader. It's very tall, but then standing on the footpegs turns out not to be what you might expect, at least if you're built like me. So in the end, there's only one motorcycle in the segment that does it well here and it's also Italian. But then there is suspension of this Desert X and I'd like to tell you about it early on as I'm quite impressed with it. It is manually adjustable and to do anything with the front, well, you need either tools or a very, very thin coin. On an adventure motorcycle with an enduro and rally riding modes, you might expect to be given easy adjustments. Like for example, in a KTM where you can do it just turning some knobs that are attached there, but well, not here. Not here, but this is not the point because what I wanted to say is that the suspension in Desert X is quite enjoyable and comfortable, basically regardless of the setting, at least in the back. It soaks up bumps and potholes pretty well and stays composed just as if it was not hitting the outer ring, the outer border of a given pothole, transferring all that into the bike's chassis and instead it would nicely and steadily you know, bring the wheel down immediately and then slowly or gently up without you know, this boom, hit of the other side of the pothole. It's pretty nicely damped and I, I wouldn't need my motorcycle to be any better than this Desert X's suspension is. It again feels like air suspension in comparison to some other motorcycles. Only Suzuki Vistrom 800D in this segment would give me such a good impression. So this Desert X is comfy. I like that. 
in the curves it may get floaty a little bit when riding over something rough but then we've got to remember that suspension travel is serious with the front wheel with 21 inch rim having 23 centimeters of travel and the rear wheel with an 18 inch rim having 22 centimeters of travel tires are tubeless they are Pirelli Scorpion STR which are installed on a few of the bikes in the segment and they're not the best but they may serve a dual purpose up to some point. Exiting tight corners and adding a throttle makes traction control work a lot here. Spoked rims are beautiful and there is 25 centimeters of ground clearance which is fantastic result overall and the second best in the segment. So there's a lot to work with and Ducati uses all that very well keeping you not shaken. This is not obvious, by the way, and other motorcycles with a lot of suspension travel as well, not always are as pleasant as this one. So you may really speed up over some bumps and Desert X will handle it well. And you can get up to the speed with that 937 cubic centimeter V-twin engine, so with two cylinders, with 110 horsepower and 92 newton meters of torque. And the bike does well on the streets to the point of reaching high speeds pretty quickly and without any crazy side effects like shaking or terrible noise. No, it is quite calm and the landscape just keeps moving quicker, so it's great. It feels quite effortless and I like that as it gives an impression of having things fully under control. But it's not the quickest motorcycle in this segment, even though it, along with the Multistrada V2, which has three horsepower more and two newton meters of torque more, these are the two most powerful ones in the segment. This X is quick enough, I feel, and it is fun to ride in terms of engine performance. This Multistrada V2 and that one more motorcycle in the segment are the ones that may excite actually when accelerating and I do appreciate that in them. There is just a little tiny bit of all right, but it could pull harder thought in my head when I push this in the Multistrada, especially that there is a certain problem at low RPM. If you've watched my Multistrada V2 review, you know that that motorcycle struggles a lot below 4000 rpm but this is not what i mean here in desert x you can feel that it doesn't like low rpm but it's not as horrible somehow as in the multistrada v2 and it doesn't choke and it doesn't shake as badly as that one to the point of it here being only an observation and not a big complaint but what's problematic is that this bike uh, having a just 7,000 kilometers on the clock would feel like its engine is going to fall apart. After a cold start, it's clunky as if it was in love with a BMW boxer trying to copy it. So then you rev it and see that RPM fall dangerously low and it sounds and it gently shakes as if it was going to switch off. And I'm dead serious here. It's the first time that I would worry that an engine would die just like that for nothing. In, in, in the first minutes, I would keep the throttle slightly open when stopping at the traffic lights to make sure that I can set off without the engine you know, suddenly dying. Imagine that you put all that cash out of your pocket and the first thing that happens after starting the bike is you worrying if it can handle riding or staying even on or not. When it heats up, it's becoming fine. I also very much enjoy that small range of rotation of the throttle which doesn't force you to twist your wrist like crazy we can make a song out of that it lets you quickly get the throttle wide open or fully closed it's, it's a small thing but it's awesome to me i do like that still this ride by wire throttle by ducati is likely one of the worst parts of their motorcycles it is so numb and it just strange to the point of being hard to express it you know there is something wrong but you don't know what it may be the delay in reaction or that you expect a certain reaction when rolling the throttle but instead it's a different reaction it's hard to say but all of the recent adventure models from ducati have that and it's a, to me it's a significant downside even though i cannot exactly express what's wrong with that for me especially that it didn't want to start exactly the first time i wanted to switch the engine on so it's something differently it would turn and stop while i would keep holding the starter button i had to release and press again and it would completely ignore that 
So I released it, pressed once again, and then it started. Moody. There should be a large discount on these motorcycles called an uncertainty discount. And yet it sometimes can start up and ride and, and can ride very nicely. Definitely in the corners, at all speeds higher than crawling speeds, it seems that those mid-size adventure motorcycles in general handle significantly better than their large colleagues from the big adventure motorcycle segment. I definitely see a pattern here in the majority, if not all the cases, except for BMW. There should be three main things said about how Ducati Desert X handles. First is that it's a very, a very neutral in its behavior. It doesn't resist you and follows the command very well. Whether it's starting to lean, whether you're tightening or straightening up, whether it's low speeds, high speeds, accelerating or braking inside the turn, it's really good here and nothing really puts it out of balance. The second thing is that it's not the quickest to react to all that. So it does it, but you just need to be patient. Only at the lowest speeds you can nicely throw it from a lean left to the right and vice versa. But it speeds, it's a process. Not worse than others, but it's for sure not better as well. And the third thing is that at crawling speeds there is this wobbly feel as if it was standing on its tall skinny legs with almost no muscle. If you're riding perfectly straight with no lean it is fine, but if you start turning a little bit to go around the car, make a U-turn or whatever else, it immediately becomes unsure, it hesitates and you've got to focus super hard to keep it exactly upright and not suddenly fall on the ground. And this is a downside that may be related simply to long travel suspension and some other factors like sitting very high with foot pegs also rather high from the ground and the suspension is also not as crazily harsh in some other motorcycles so you know there's more movement. But it wouldn't be my pick for city riding, that would be the conclusion here. The thing is that when off-roading this also matters and for example Aprilia 2 RX660 gives you plenty more control at crawling speeds but also harsher in terms of suspension generally. So then Aprilia is unrideable because of uh, how stiff its suspension is. But this is also another thing for a head-to-head -head comparison video. Anyhow, at crawling speeds, I cannot praise Desert X. Then after speeding up just a bit, it's really doing great. And if you don't want it fast, brakes will do a good job bringing you down to legal, boring and pointless speeds. The front brake is nicely sharp and strong enough with a good feel. The rear brake does what it is supposed to do, so it slows you down and has uh, ABS that is pretty well calibrated. The front dives very much when braking with the front brake, too much even for my taste. It is not terrible but can get tiring when you deal with that boat-like experience every few minutes when coming to a stop in a city, for example. It's also not helping when you are slowly maneuvering, when you want to slow down and then, well, the whole bike behaves like during a storm on an open sea. I mentioned foot pegs along the way and the ones on my bike had the rubber padding removed and they seemed at an okay height for me, but I would be, I think, more comfortable if they were lower. I feel that it would also match very well with off-road riding and standing on the pegs. I believe that there might be maybe room to bring the foot pegs lower as I wouldn't be scraping them at all times on this model. It is not as encouraging. Turn, not that much. The display that you're seeing is filled with data and it is not very clear, at least in the beginning. There are also two hidden menus. One only with riding modes that is accessible when you press and hold that combined switch to the right. And then the other one after you select settings in this square table window thingy on top of the screen. This way you enter some more settings and you can change brightness, for example, or colors of the display between, well, black and white. Some other side things as well, but it's not the most intuitive system and it doesn't even let you know if, if you've selected any specific option. It just moves to back or exit position with no highlight or anything else that would indicate that you actually have done anything. Very strange. There are also six riding modes and I used Urban, which is gentle on the throttle. Then I moved to Sport, which gives a more rapid throttle response, which I liked. And when going off-road, I wanted rear ABS off, so I switched to Enduro. It also turns traction control off. Yes, 
there's traction control here. ABS that is cornering. Nice one Ducati here, by the way. It's also possible to customize these riding modes the way that you want them to be. This is nice to have. Heated grips are here and so is an LED front light with those nice two ring daytime running lights. No keyless ignition or fuel cap, which is actually moved to the right and maybe combined with an external tank that you can mount in the rear of the bike. Interesting. There are no radars, no electronic suspension option, no real rear rack for some reason, no nice rear tail lamp, just this something, and no windshield adjustment. I wish that this last part was there as wind protection is not very impressive and despite there being no turbulences, it's pretty loud the way the air is flowing around the windshield. It's more like it's smashing through, the whole bike is smashing through rather than nicely cutting the air. Having the windshield higher would be helpful, I think. Now, at speeds above 100 km per hour, you may survive, but it's not a super pleasant experience. On the other hand, this is the preferred way of using a Desert X, since it becomes hot like hell when riding. My ass! Another motorcycle that totally cannot handle its own heat and not only the loud fan switch on, but it's boiling your body to the point that I had to move my legs to the sides to cool them down like on Husqvarna as well. At some points I would notice very clearly that some of that heat is coming from the exhaust pipes on the right side of the bike and I would say that it's a serious issue if you plan on riding in warmer weather and not only outside the cities with no traffic lights, so no stopping and no heat wave. A bad score for Ducati. Shame even. There is a quick shifter that is brutal going up and down. When dropping gears, it requires kicking the lever and I could feel a lot of resistance as if the quick shifter would be trying to say, stop changing gears, you barbarian. I didn't really like it, obviously, because of how hard the lever moves and how harsh the gear changes are then, but I never missed the gear and the transmission also worked fully reliably. On this bike, I would prefer not to use the quick shifter at all because of how big of a deal it is for it to work. The fuel tank is 21 liters, but I realized that when the fuel level drops just below half, a lovely icon of a petrol station appears and it shows you a super annoyingly changing range. If you add throttle, you lose 10 to 15 kilometers immediately. You close it and you're back up. It's panicking. How can almost a half of a 21 liter fuel tank last only for 50 or even less kilometers according to the bike's computer? The display is pretty far away. It's small and with a lot of things on it. So it's not feasible to clearly see how many stripes there are left. I am slightly disappointed with the engine sound is this is a V2 and it should sound awesome. It's one of the last ones. That small muffler also looks uh, hopeful. Then there's a clunky noise regardless of RPM or speed. <laughs> that is not that cool. But the paint texture is nice as it's a sort of a matte one. So on Vitol's recommendation board, I am giving, and that might be actually a surprise after those few last sentences, I've been giving this new Ducati Desert X an 8 out of 10. Thanks to competent engine that somehow reduces the feeling of dying under 4000 RPM in comparison to how it is on a Multistrada V2. So now it only feels like it wants to die at idle. It's a high score thanks to also good and neutral handling, comfortable suspension, a seat that is nice to sit on and cool style. On the other hand, the engine heat may be unbearable during warmer days. Numb throttle is here, a clunky quick shifter as well. At crawling speed, it feels not a very composed and precise to steer and supporting yourself when stopping may be a not very comfortable experience if you're not much taller than I am. Not the best urban motorcycle, despite having a riding mode that's called exactly that, but it should be good for comfortable touring after fixing the windshield. Some gentle off-roading should be doable as well, but keep in mind that it's a tall, heavy and very expensive motorcycle. The most expensive in the segment, actually. There you go. Subscribe to see other honest reviews and now also head-to-head -head comparisons of all these mid-size and also previously large adventure motorcycles. Have a good one!